Yo, yo. Yo, yo. Yo, yo. Ah, Mookie. Yo. You already know what's going on, y'all. Y'all know what's going on. We got the part two uh -huh. interview to that boy C. White. <laughs> we ain't not going to hold y'all too long. Y'all know what's going on. Anything else you got to say before we start? You need to recap a little bit, Mookie, or how you I feel? I need to recap. <laughs> I don't definitely need to recap. But hold on. Let me fix your light, Sean. Let me fix your light. I need that thing on you, baby. I need that thing on you. This guy. <laughs> That's my baby daddy. Good. Make sure we ain't one. Yeah, we good, shorty. All right, let's get it in, bro. Let's go, y'all. I was 25, 26 with a full brain then. Mm -hmm. Now I'm rationalizing uh, because now I have a son. And, 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 and I want to get this little boy something that I never had. And, and I didn't know nothing about being no good father, no bad father. I don't know shit about that. Cause you didn't I just, that. I just wanted to be a her father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just wanted to be a her father. That he can come in there and pull them eyelids open. Right. Touch the nose. <laughs> slob on my face. Mm -hmm. I ain't know nothing. And, and, and I figured he, me and him will figure it out together. So that was my approach. Me and him will figure this out together. Uh, so I, I, I learned. When I was becoming an overbearing, uh, mean, frustrated parent, mm. when a little boy asked me, Dad, are you mad about something? That mean I'm taking some shit out on him and he can tell. Mm. Yeah. So my, yeah, I, I learned through, through the kid to what's a good and, and bad father. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and to this day, uh, I've been a day one daddy. Uh, I don't have no unexcused absences. I've been having perfect attendance in fatherhood. <laughs> yeah, I got perfect attendance in fatherhood. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Gotta respect that, yo. Mm -hmm. and, and, and another thing, <laughs> I'm all mumbling over my words. Bro, by you being there for your child every single day or just all the time, bro, mm -hmm. your child is going to see your bad days. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And definitely when, definitely. like, in your life, bro, when you and your woman having problems, you're not financial stability, your job yeah, killing you. Slow. Just overall in life, bro, it's just like mm -hmm. your child is going to see that, bro. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you going, naturally, you going to take some stuff out on your child because your child just being a child sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it's just naturally, like, just going to happen, bro. Mm. But it's crazy. It feel, it's, it's not a good thing, but it's a good thing because you actually are in your child's life all mm -hmm. the time. Definitely. I mean, I couldn't agree more. But you also got to realize that if you are doing that, um, you know, taking things out on your child that you don't really mean to and right. things like that, you got to catch yourself. Facts. Because Facts. I caught myself. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So You got to go through it, though. But you you got to go through gotta it. You got to go through it. Yeah. And you got to be the type of parent to, if I know I'm having a bad day and, you know, you know, your wife got the kids and everything, you'd be the type of man strong enough to call up your wife and be like, listen, I'm having a really bad day right now. Uh -huh. I'm going to go sit somewhere for about an hour. Men don't be do that. Be listen, I'm going to go sit somewhere for about an hour before I come home. N not even an hour. Maybe, maybe 30, 30, 45 minutes. Because uh -huh. I don't want to bring my riffraff home with you. We all going to have bad days. But you got to understand that your, your your wife, your children, they not the reason for your bad day. Mm, at you know all. You know what I'm saying? So you need to chill somewhere, whether it's just sitting in a car. Sitting in a car and just relaxing. Ironing everything out in your head. So when you do go in the house, you can be the best man that you can be for your family. Mm. So yeah. Yeah, okay. How many how many children you got, bro? I got two by one woman. Okay. So I, I had my son, uh, I like that. And then uh, when, when when she was pregnant with my daughter. You no, know you like that, Cam. <laughs> you out here, Cam. I think Cam got like five or six kids, bro. I uh, hope not, but he might. No, nah, I do think so. Okay. Uh, I, I didn't want to continue to have children out of wedlock. Yes, sir. Uh, so I made a Absolutely. conscious decision. Uh, yeah, to marry, to marry, even though we divorced. 
uh, but but I wanted to give them something. Uh, I wanted to break the curse, homie. You want more kids? Nah. Yeah, I want to. Yeah, I want to be reckless with that dick and just run around and fuck <laughs> them baby grown now. Yeah, I don't want to be tied down no more. If I make a baby, I want one overseas that I can leave behind. No, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Them no. overseas baby don't matter. No. Yeah, man. Fuck them overseas baby. I'm gonna have some overseas <laughs> baby okay, like yeah, Granddaddy them did in Japan and Vietnam. You can't <laughs> do that, man. You can't yeah, I know, say but, that. Yeah, I know. I can't, but I think it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just want to make an outside, But this is this is this like ninety percent of this this video up until this point, you have been. I want to be a sorry motherfucker sometime, homie. It's hard being a good daddy all the time. Man. All the time, yeah, I want to be a sorry. Yeah, it is. Yo, all that, the time, bro. That is so real, bro. It's hard being a one every, every single day. time, bro. Every day. I think sometimes I don't have thoughts, bro. No, what I'm saying is, I think. In your life, mm. you have to actually reach a certain limit mm. of um. You got to reach a certain limit of your mindset to mm. know this is how I'm going to maintain all the time, right, bro. Right, right. You feel me? Like that that level mm. is high, bro. Always. Just to be a one all the time. All the time. Mm. We talking about Eric Thomas style. Mm. E Thomas. Yeah. That's hard, bro. I mean, E. Thomas ain't A1 all the time. He bro. not, but he, he make it seem like that. Mm -hmm. Not make it seem like out of his words, but just right. how he carry yourself, his demeanor. Mm -hmm. But, yo, that's real, though, yo. Mother, I want to see at least what it feel like. <laughs> I at least want to see what it feel I like. Did. You want to feel, you, wanna, you, you yeah. know what it feel like. You was a part of that. Uh-uh, no, no. I know what it feel like not to have. I don't know what it's like to be the one to cause. Mm -hmm. That's so contradicting. I know, man, but shit, fuck it. Uh, <laughs> man, I want to section a baby, man. I just see some time and send the child support to her, too. Come fuck the mama, high-five the baby, play the game, rub him on the head. And then he grew up and make it to the league, and I show back up. <laughs> nah, he tripping. He you tripping, He going to show up in the league with well, who, who skill set, the mama or you? The stepdaddy. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's normally who developed them, nigga, the stepdaddy. Then taught that nigga how to run them raps. <laughs> go that way, go that way. <laughs> <laughs> he laughing at that, yo. He, he talking so real, though. Yeah, it's real, though. That's it's real. real. Everybody that had to, especially when, like, when things ain't going right and you struggling and you got just enough and you got to be like, am I going to get this to my kids? But I ain't had such and such in such a long time. Like, what, what do I want to do? And you're like, ugh. I know Man, Charleston I wish I could White. Do it for myself. Bro, I know but Charleston White the right sound bad, but he say things that yeah, other people won't say. And, and he say things that people actually think in yeah. their head, bro. Yeah. Other people you won't cannot, say that. bro, you cannot say that you just don't be like sometimes, like, yo, I love my kids, I love my woman. Mm -hmm. But if I was to go left and take care of myself, I would be good. Yeah, you would be happier. <laughs> yeah, you would you be happier. Me? If you just said F it and be like, all oh, is mine. Right. From now on, do what Al Father did. <laughs> do what Al Father did. That's a fact. That's a fact. Yeah. yeah. Nah, homie, but listen. It's all right to want to be a low down, dirty motherfucker and admit it, but you're not. <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. Now, listen, I want to have a baby where I done left behind just, yeah. You gotta be. I want to be. Man, I don't. Man, I'm. Man, shit. Yeah, I want to be dirty sometimes. I want to. Yeah, I want to. Do you think you got that really in you to do though? Right. No. Okay. Yeah. Mm -mm. Nah, but but saying uh, it is just something. Uh, it, it's yeah, just, yeah. it just left out there in the universe to just be say I don't want to be an ain't shit. Dad. Well, I'm just saying there's a possibility that I may make a baby here in the future with the fame and stardom that I got, mm. and I may not be able to be there for the baby. This is coming from a person who has seven children seven. and one on the way. You got seven. And one on the way. I could never see myself not being a part of my children's life. Mm. Me too. This is what I used to say when the first kid, and I had my first son. I said, man, mama, I can't see myself loving no other kid the way I love this child. I couldn't imagine, nigga. Then that little girl came. Boy, you love her equally. So I'm saying that. I also said, nigga, as soon as I get a chance to sell out, I'm going to sell out. Mm. First chance I got to sell out. I ain't sell out. Right. Sell out what? Uh, your people. Yeah, I had a chance to sell out. Like, you talking about snitching? 
No, sell out, be, be, be what they want us to be against black people. Right. Cooning. Mm. Cooning. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I had a great opportunity to do that. And you don't think he's been doing that? No. Nah. He hasn't. Uh, I take my money and give it to the black people that people don't even know exist. Uh, so, it, 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 can we keep it funky? Yeah. Like, I'm talking about real funky. Just the funky podcast, eh? I swear. Funky Friday, mm -hmm. just keep it funky. <laughs> Say that. So, when I, when I see Charleston White, right, and I know of, of really what you stand for, I respect what you stand for. How it's articulated sometimes is something like, ah, uh, why you gotta go all the way over there? Mm. For example, this is quote unquote coming out of what you said. Fuck Deion Sanders and his sons for leaving Jackson State. Fuck Nipsey Hussle. Fuck King Vaughn. <laughs> fuck Jay-Z. Yeah, fuck them niggas. <laughs> that ain't cooning. No. What, what enlighten me? Yeah, I want to uh, know. Yeah. They don't say that nigga say fuck LeBron James. LeBron James get mistreated more than any athletes in the world. Mm. I, I ain't saying that for white people. But niggas don't say that. Uh, niggas ain't my kind of niggas. <laughs> uh, uh, these niggas go to white people stadiums and buy popcorn and hot dogs. So you ain't never been to a football game? I, I do, but I ain't paid for it. And I don't buy no hot dogs and popcorn. So what you uh, do? I, I really don't watch sports so at all. So what's your thing? Uh, strip club, hoes, and, and <laughs> poor nigga babies. <laughs> and not fucking they mamas. Like the little league football coaches. See, I'm the nigga in the projects and in the ghetto that give away the toys, make sure the kids get, and don't touch their mama's pussies. I ain't like them other niggas. So I can say fuck Dion, because nigga, I Dion coached in my city before with Prime. Nigga, I know the East Side Falcons used to play, so I know about Dion. Hey, you that ain't respect worthy for you to uh -uh. say, you know, no, even though. No, 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 that ain't respect worthy. Oh, uh, no. because 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 what I saw was, and I ain't really saying fuck Dion, I'm telling black people to say fuck Dion. Because what happened, we and took they our, won't. Well, we took our love and our support to Colorado and we forgot about all these HBCUs that's winning or losing. We ain't said high five them. We don't know one black coach at HBCU. Okay, now stop. Talk, Mookie. Talk. Tell me how you feel about that. Uh, honestly, I'm on the fence about that because, okay, yes, it was a good look for him to go to a HBCU, but when you try to better yourself at life, why not take a better opportunity mm. for you and your family? Wow, you know what I'm saying? But you, you, you really can't say, you know, F Dion. You, you could think... Like he 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 did something, you know. I went. I gotta leave this black school to go get these white man dollars. Right. You feel what I'm saying? But at the same time, that's a better opportunity for him. Right. That's a bigger platform for him to show, you know, people of color that he can maintain on that level mm -hmm. as a person of color. Yeah. And and honestly, yes, he brought a lot of money to the school. I ain't gonna lie, they're getting whooped right now. What? Uh, uh, Jacksonville? Uh, uh, no, nah, Colorado. I think they yeah. lost like three or four in a row. But this is his first year. Yeah, and this this is his first year. So when it comes to two things like that, it's like, do you want to do what's right in people's eyes and in, in in certain people's eyes? Because it ain't everybody. Mm -hmm. It's certain people. You know, Charles and White is just one of those type of people. Or do you want to do what's right for your family? Can you get on a bigger platform and still produce how you was producing when you was at an HBCU? He went, he, he went, I think he can. He went bigger. It yeah. went bigger. And, bro, he did a tremendous job at Jacksonville. Yeah, well, Jackson, a, I said Jacksonville. Jackson, Jackson, Jackson State. State. Yeah. He did a tremendous job, bro. Right. And, I mean, it's common sense. Bro, I did what I was supposed to do here. Yeah. Now I'm about to go to that D1 division. Yeah, you, he elevated. Yeah. How can you get mad at any person of color for elevating and doing what's right for them and their family? How long? I think how long he was at Jackson State, y'all? He was there for like a year. A year? Yeah. But but, but still, yeah, no, nah, bro. He, he did what he's supposed yeah, to do. Okay. So I you, think you, I'll you agree say with you. Him. Say you did go to this Caucasian bleach white school. Look what you brought to that school that that yeah. school never had. Bro. Yeah, and they had you people in all seats types and all of people that. Of color in that school. Wayne, the, man, that was yeah, a lot of people. I ain't yeah. gonna go down the line, but it, yeah. it, it was it was it was that. You know so what basically, I'm you disagree with him, right? I, I disagree with him. Yeah, I disagree with him somewhat. So, like I said, Charleston White be hitting on some things, and some things sometimes I feel like 
he speak from you know his emotion, mm. just as well as just other people like Umar Johnson, yeah. like like bro, he's a very articulated black man, but stop treating us like black people are the superior race. Right. We are not the superior race. Nah, the superior real. race is us as a whole, bro. We're, we're a part of this puzzle. You mm. feel what I'm saying? So when we get together and unify with white people, Spanish people, Asian people, Latinos, mm. that's, that's the bigger race right there. The human race is what we come together and produce not only for ourselves, our children, for our futures, for, for um for the future and everything like that, something that a child can look up to. Nah. Yeah, my bro, my my father had a Latino. Alejandro was the man. Like he came <laughs> through, he cut the grass like crazy. You know what I'm saying? Right. My daddy always tipped him, but not at the same time. You do something for Alejandro, nah, so his bro. child could be like, oh man, Mr. Percy, he the man, boy. Nah, for real. He he he, he, he could put up a TV like ain't nobody else. You mm. know what I'm saying? And. I just think that unity is better than division. Mm. Unit, united we stand, divided we fall. Okay. So when you start slicing us up and trying to say black people are the superior race, you, you really, you really hurting. You You're hurting the human race, right, right yeah. there. So, yeah. Because, like I said, behind everything that you say has some truth. But to that, I would suggest you say in that statement, I ain't gonna say per se. Fuck Dion, but look, let's leave that part out. I'm saying it. That no, <laughs> but, but what we receive would be like, yo, even though Dion Sanders had to make a professional decision exactly. to go chase a bag that Jackson State didn't necessarily have, let's not forget about the other HBCU coaches that's out there. Let me just say, good. Uh, Dion knew they didn't have a bag when he took that on. It was already an agreement that we know we go struggle. He even agreed to give portions of that to that facility. He already knew this. The white folks just came and do what they always do. Come get the nigga and take the attention that he was gonna bring to the spotlight on the HBCU. Now this big old light that could have been on these HBCU is now on this one white school that's 92% white. Uh, so let me ask you this. If you was in Deion Sanders' situation, exactly. you would have stayed at Jackson State? No, you wouldn't have. No. <laughs> You missing what I'm saying. <laughs> you missing what I'm saying. <laughs> so Dion, Dion done what he was supposed to do okay. as a hub and in the coach. I'm saying fuck the hub and in the coach. Nigga, we don't rally behind no nigga that'll sell out for the white man job. He talking like a black person. He talking like a black person. That's somebody that you know. Huh? He talk, not somebody that you know. Just somebody around the way mm -hmm. that don't want to never see you grow. Mm -hmm. Crabs in a barrel. Man. Yeah, that's that's how he talk. Yo, he talking like somebody around the way that don't want to see you grow. He under, yo, Johnson, why are you, he killing me right now? Yeah, he man. understand why I mean, Dion did it, he but he also talking he like said some, he wouldn't even have did it. Yeah, but he also talking like somebody around the way, like, nah, yo, you shouldn't so supposed to leave you us. Got, you 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 got to decipher with people like this, there, because he is an activist. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He is an activist. And just like Omar Johnson is an activist, another, you got to probably react to one of his interviews. Right. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> he going, hey, you rolling. You know what I'm saying? But, but, but at the same time, you got to understand what's truth and what's nonsense. Mm. Right now, he's speaking nonsense. Mm. Because you as a black man would have chased that white man bag too. Nah, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and you being honest, but you being ignorant at the at same, same time. time. Yeah, facts. Nigga, go get with the nigga that's still with the niggas. Down there on that field with them holes in it. Like the schools and the shoes. That nigga, we always had a Negro League. Stay in the Negro League, my nigga. But you wouldn't. Why you gonna take that. our best and our brightest? So you done went and took the best and the brightest players over here for who to benefit? Not your people. And you done took all your people with their fame and their support for who? A, a school that's 92% white and y'all ain't gave a one game. Game. Not one game to the black HBCU. Not Grammy, not Pred, not one. No celebrity. So you're going to come over here and rally all the best and the brightest players to come over here on Whitey's porch. And you debate, sir. You and your son, y'all debate. No, nah, my nigga, I ain't with that. So I'm saying fuck him and his son. <laughs> nigga, why y'all ain't doing this same support for these little league football teams in y'all city that helped them babies get to where Dion is? They don't get that kind of support. They stand on the corners and have the cheerleader little girl looking like hoes dancing, begging for money with buckets. Okay, now, now let me. That's just the little league fundraiser. Let's let, let, let just keep it a buck. 
all right? Honestly, it's, it, 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 it make me feel a certain type of way when Now, you... I'm going to get to King Von and Nip, but we on Hold Dion on. right yeah, now. Yeah, we on Dion. <laughs> it just make me feel a certain type of way because I respect what, I respect Dion and what Dion got going on. So it's hard for me to hear you say that right. in, a, in a way where I know Deion Sanders' impact in our culture has did way more than anybody else in uh -huh. this in this society that we where, live in. What impact have Deion had? Other he than brought notoriety to a a space that, in essence, really wasn't there before. What, Denver, Col Colorado? Deion. He brought notoriety to Colorado. To Jackson State. He brought notoriety to Jackson State. And then he took it where? To Colorado. Okay. Now, to, to, to make my point, all right? So I'm asking you, Charles the White. <clears throat> you go to a... Matter of fact, can we keep it funky? Mm -hmm. What's the most that you've ever gotten to do or to be Charles the White? Uh, $40,000 for, for a two-day interview. Okay, $40,000. Now, if you could say... I could change that forty thousand to four hundred thousand dollars. Would you just leave that forty thousand dollars, or would you go get four hundred thousand dollars? I'm question. gonna go get four hundred thousand. Is that not what Deion question. Sanders did? Mm -mm. Okay, what did Deion Sanders? Do? Uh, Deion son is a star quarterback that he's trying to get to the league, and he's fathering his son, he's fathering his son to the league with nobody else's children in mind. And he's getting a pretty big check to do it. And what he's doing is he's robbing black people of their star power. He's yeah. robbing black people <laughs> of their economics because he done took it and gave it to the white man. Because the, the, ooh, the, ooh. the, the, the space that you speak of, why not? Why not send it back there too? Why leave it here? Why the baby? Why Lil Wayne? Why all these major people don't go stand on the sideline of coaches that's not a celebrity? Why they don't do it to people who are not celebrities? Because, Why? Yeah, because yeah, this is what I know about black people. They worship and they idolize celebrities. That's why they are worshiping and idolizing Dion. They worship. They worship. They worship and idolize celebrities. And so I'm here to say, fuck them celebrities. So do he want, like, do he want somebody like us They'd be like, yo, we should be able to call Little Wayne and get him down here. I mean, that's not gonna happen, bro. Yeah. Little Wayne is not a normal person, just like Dion people, Sanders. People is not, is not normal. normal. Yeah, bro, you got to. He's gotta... not a normal person, bro. Bro. So they gotta have an angle to get, you know, these certain type of celebrities to come. So, because if Dion wasn't at Colorado, none of these celebrities would have went to Colorado. That's basically saying in his position or his situation right now. I mean, he is an activist, so I don't know if he'll do this or not. In his uh, particular situation right now, uh, uh, somebody that live on the street can call Charleston White and be like, man, come hang out with me for a day. And that's not going to happen. Bro. That's what I'm saying, bro. And, and Cam Newton just asked him the same question twice yeah, in two and, different ways. And, and he, he answered the, the same, same way. Thing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. From King Von to Nip, because when us regular people need uh, when we need You're help, they don't come, person. they don't step down and come fuck with us. That ain't true. Man, I've been in the community for the last 12 years. Man, I know Dion lived in Prosper, Texas, Dallas, Texas. Dion wasn't never there outside of his prime organization but football. That, but that's him there, though. I, but that's why I'm saying fuck him, because no, I, I was in the community with him. I, I was at the football game with him. I watched how his arrogance walked past the parents and the kids. I saw how arrogant he was to his people. Mm -hmm. He ain't loving. Man I, done, man, I done fought with the police. I was at every city council meeting. So when the football and celebrity nigga go to talking, I said, man, y'all talking from up here. I'm talking from down here with these people. I'm in the schools. I'm in the juveniles. I'm in the jails. I'm in the prisons. I'm standing on stands swearing as a, on murder cases and capital murder cases. Man, y'all talking from up there. It's easy to say fuck y'all. Easy to say fuck Dion so and his son who driving a Rolls Royce who kid and these kids down here dropping out of school to go strip and sell pussy because they daddies don't have the money to send them because they can't eat, but he got a Rolls Royce that won't pay the parking fine. Now, keep putting it in their face. Keep showing up, putting them watches in them kids' face. That's why y'all got robbed in UCLA. See, that's what I'm talking about. The Bible speaks for the least of those. Those kids up there ain't the least of those. That's why I talk about the poor nigga babies. Okay. So, can we keep it funky? Yes, sir.
<laughs> Charles, why it sound like you a hater? No, 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 no. Uh, I'm a realist. No, cause oh. you talking about you talking about materialistic things. No, 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 no. Favor ain't fair. I'm talking. I'm talking so about. So talking about. I'm talking Shadur about. Sanders I'm talking about and, and, socialism and classism. We ain't talking about favor. No, but but when you put it in their face, that ain't favor because favor is meek, mild, and humble. So you mad that that Shadur? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, glad got, got, I'm glad they got. I'm glad they got robbed. Cartier, uh, I'm glad they got robbed. I'm, no, yeah, I'm glad nah. they got robbed. Nah, I'm, glad see, every, I'm, glad, I'm glad every school he went to, he done been robbed. That's cooning. No, it ain't. That's cooning. No, it ain't. Because you bring it, so, see, see, because why I say that's cooning is you turning your story and your beliefs using your platform to tear down a person who's bringing notoriety to something that wasn't that wasn't there. Well, they well they use their platform to tear down the black school by not giving them the light. But because you, the black school had this is what I'm saying. Black people for the last two years when he was at Jackson State, y'all was HBCU hashtagging. I'm talking about you couldn't get on the internet and not yeah, see HBCU true. hashtag. True. What happened, y'all? Y'all cooning now. What's the white man with Colorado University? Y'all cooning now? What happened to the HBCU hashtag? Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. What happened? I'm still HBCU hashtagging while I'm cooning. Yeah. And I'm still showing up at the HBCU by an HBCU girl mm -hmm. and rocking it on the major platform. I don't see nobody HBCU in it like me. Who, so who cooning? So I'm going to tell you this. You just sit up there and told me that you made Forty thousand dollars in two days, mm -hmm. and you also just told me that if you had an opportunity to make four hundred thousand dollars, you would take that. So the fact that I Deion just, said, I, hold on, hold on, I, I, let, let, me just, let me just say, okay. I turned down a five million dollar deal with Aiden Ross and Kick to take a half a million dollar deal with niggas. <laughs> I turned down a five million dollar deal with Aiden Ross and Kick to come over here to sign a half a million dollar deal with niggas so I can stay with my people. Mm. Mm. Yeah, they say I'm dumb and stupid. Yeah, I turned down five million so I can go sign half a million. So I can stay with these niggas. I ain't want to <laughs> sell out and go beat up them white. Crazy. <laughs> no, I'm tripping. His face is fresh and booty. What he say? So I can stay with these niggas. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that was crazy. Folks. Take all my star power over there with Kick and Aiden Roth with them Jews. I wasn't fit to do that, my nigga. I stayed with the niggas. Culture TV. Don't even know if they can give me the whole half a million. But nigga, I stayed with my people, my nigga. My spirit wouldn't let me do it. So I don't give a damn what Dion, that Dion talked. Nigga, I sacrificed for it. Yeah, when I told them white folk I'm not leaving my people, they took back the, 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 it, it, it's a, it's a, it's a curriculum. And for those that know, it's a curriculum called Thinking for a Change. When Obama implemented the My Brother's Keepers initiative, there's a curriculum that's called Thinking for a Change. It's damn near a $100,000 curriculum. White folk gave it to me. But they said, Charleston, we want you. We don't want your people. I said, if you take me away from my people, you diminish the value of who I am for my people. Mm. I'm going to say it again. When you take me away from my people, you diminish the value of who I am for my people. And I refuse to do that. And Dion diminished his value to his people for his people to go over there. You got enough money where you ain't got to do How much money you want? I don't want a hundred million. I don't want a billion. Mm. It's that much harder to get in heaven if you believe that word. I don't want a hundred million, my nigga. I want to walk amongst my people. I want to be able to go to the bottom of the least of those. He can't do that. Him know his son, they go rob him. I ain't been robbed yet, and I show up with no security. I done said fuck Nipsey, I done said fuck the Crips, fuck Raymond Washington. I done disrespected everything these niggas done killed for, and I travel with no security. They can't do that up there. Nah, mm. that don't mean you ain't been looking over your shoulder. Pepper I ain't been spraying. looking over my shoulder. I just, went to sleep. I just went to sleep in the barber shop and got hit in the head with the pistol in the hood. It's viral on in there. I didn't look over my shoulder in the hood. I went to sleep. I ain't looking over my shoulder. I went to sleep in the barbershop trail. Nigga come hit me, a killer. I didn't look over my shoulder. Nigga, I went to sleep. Okay. I go, it's pictures of me sleeping in a strip club like this. Here. I ain't looking over my shoulder. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. I speak against evil. Okay, let me ask you this. Mm. So you think if Deion Sanders goes sitting in that barber chair, you think he gonna get hit with a pistol without no security? 
he go get robbed and hit. No. You lying to me? No. <laughs> he getting robbed lying right lying now. To me. Him and his son mm -hmm. getting robbed right now. He got robbed in Jacksonville. Yeah. But see, Dion, Dion coached football. I address killers in the neighborhood. I address the niggas who kill in our community. Dion don't. Mm -hmm. I address the gang bangers who but, do wrong. But you just got pistol whipped though. No, I didn't get pistol whipped. I got hit. What's the difference? Uh, a hit and pistol whip is a different thing, nigga. <laughs> you you got hit I got hit pistol? in the head and jumped up, nigga, and I ain't get hit no more. Because <laughs> I don't know what to do when a nigga hit me. I ain't get hit no more. What you do? Nigga, I went to work. Oh, y'all was fighting? <laughs> I went to work. That's <laughs> it. I went to work. What that mean? Uh, I ain't get hit no more. So you used to do it. This, this ain't even been a week. Yeah, but y'all was fighting. I got hit sleep. And then y'all, you how got... I'm on, listen, how I'm on fight, get hit, sleep, and a nigga hit... I'm dazed when a nigga hit me, so I ain't no fight. Nigga, I went to grabbing. So you got hit and y'all got... <laughs> I went to grabbing shit. I went... We the nigga didn't touch me no more. I went to grabbing shit. Nigga, you don't hit me no more. But did you hit him back? Mm-mm. Like, how I'm on hit, I'm dazed. If the nigga hit you with a pistol... She shit. making it so hard. What did you do, Charleston White? What did he do? Well, he did something. Bro. He won't tell us, though. He, he went to work. He won't tell us. Please, how are you going to wake up? Nigga, you day. He got you. I'm sleep like this, you know. So this is, this is what I'm telling you. I wake up, nigga, and grab the closest thing I could as a weapon till I can come to, and it ended. So, so this is what I'm saying. Dion coach football. I address killers. I say, fuck King Vaughn. Nipsey, rolling 60s, and if you kill in my community, I'm gonna say you did it, nigga. You don't get to ride around here and holler no snitching. Who did that killing? I'm the nigga come out and say they shot that baby. And you bitch ass nigga better turn y'all self in, nigga, and we ready to go to war with that. See, Dion don't do who that. Who is when you say we? Who is Me. And I got some niggas go go to war. Okay. Now I got some niggas go go to war, homie. See, this, see, this is the thing, Charles. <laughs> like, I, I, I think. Everything that you're saying has some truth to it. It's just the, the delivery. Well, you're standing, there's no denying that you're standing for and by your people. Well, here's the thing. Uh, when you're addressing evil, you can't worry about the delivery. When you're looking at the conditions of our community, you can't worry about the evil when you got kids that kill kids and say, we smoking on Tuca. I mean, I get what he's saying, yeah. I raised movies. Because when you think about it, little bro, just think about the, 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 all right, let's just think about entertainment right now. Because that's what he mainly speaks on. Bro, do you realize that these rappers and, you know, a lot of these entertainers who, who all right, let's just take Chicago. For mm. Some some of these rappers in Chicago is the dumbest dudes ever. Right. Because they snitching on themselves. Right. They talk about the stuff that they did in the street. So we don't even need an undercover to get to y'all. All we got to do is listen to your last three songs, and we know how Shorty got killed. You, you feel can't what I'm say you can't say the dudes of Chicago, bro. This been no, going, that's this, no. It's mostly them. No, I get, but I'm just saying it's been going on. That's been going on for a minute. Yeah, and, like, it's, and it's and it's and it's just foolishness. Yeah, it's been going now, on. Now he's for speaking a on a right now. What he's talking about is the truth. So, like I said, you got to decipher. Fact from fiction. You feel what I'm saying? He can be a fictional character at the times, but he also will speak a lot of facts. I'm not going to lie, though, bro. Like, how vicious he coming off when it yeah, comes to, like... I mean, um, that's what gets us right there. His delivery. That's no, why he's famous. No, what I'm saying is how... how It seems like he coming off as a, as, a, as a mad black activist, right? Mm -hmm. Bro, I'm not going to lie, bro. It's understandable. For a person that's trying to be a black activist, mm -hmm. like if you was trying to be, that's how I would want somebody to come up because how you say, when the when the killer in Chicago's and all that, that mm -hmm. stuff is vicious. Mm -hmm. When they talk about niggas pulling up mm -hmm. to malls and all that and like six people yeah, died yeah, yeah, and all yeah. that. What's fueling that? What type of music they listening no, to? I'm, no, down? what I'm saying is that like six people died and all that and mm -hmm. then you want you hit you saying the news. You can't go out there like everybody calm down, y'all stop. You gotta get on some stuff like yo, you mother, yo, you did it, yo, yeah, yeah, you yeah. did it, shorty, and we gotta stop and this. Got, they gotta be held accountable. Yeah, and you know somebody I mean? gotta stand up to that extent, though. Mm -hmm. They can't stand up like I'm gonna go. Look, man, you gotta stop killing no, no, people. No, 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 that ain't gonna work. You gotta stop killing people. That that, that, that wouldn't even work down here. Yeah, I'm saying <laughs> you can't just be like yo, that everybody chill. <laughs> Everybody chill, y'all. We all gonna have a meeting so we can stop. Nah, if you wanna make a difference, 
You got to come out like that. I do understand that. Yeah. See, they wasn't worried about the delivery when these kids in Chicago were talking about smoking on Tuca. Mm -hmm. They wasn't worried about the delivery. I ain't got no manners for no slut. I'm going to put my thumb in her butt. Mm -hmm. The delivery? I like girls kissing girls where I'm from. Mm -hmm. That's on the radio. Girls on girls, that's, they, that's promoting lesbianism to my daughter as we driving to school, this song they playing with Drake. Y'all worried about the delivery? Hmm. These niggas talking about killing each other. They really, that nigga thug said, nigga, I shot at your mama. You don't mention me no more. He really shot that nigga mama. Hmm. And y'all worried about my delivery? These niggas are confessing to murders on songs. Mm -hmm. And y'all worried about my delivery? The conditions of black sucking them, talking about booty hoes. Y'all worried about my mm. delivery? Mm. Come on, don't be hypocrites, black people. Mm. Y'all can't listen to this music if y'all so caught up in the my delivery. Don't do me like that. And the way y'all snap and pop y'all pussy to this music, the way y'all kill and drill to this music, don't trip about my delivery. Hey, yo, easy. Why you wear your pants like that? I wear my pants like that because that's easy access, baby. Easy. Why you talk like that? I talk like that to get my point across. Because mm. mm. when I wasn't talking like that, wearing a bow tie, y'all wasn't paying me no attention and I was going to the... That's true. We just said that. Mm -hmm. We just said that. Right. Yeah. The Supreme Court changing laws and legislation in this country. I was working with over 50 U.S. congressional members from Ted Cruz to Mark Rubio, Senator John Cornyn. I was on the front page of the American Bar Association Journal. I had done a study with News 21, Walter Conkrike School of Journalism. Y'all wasn't paying attention then. Mm. So, nigga, I gave y'all what y'all want. A ignorant motherfucking nigga that talk like them rappers. Mm. Mm. Now y'all listening. Now y'all paying attention, huh? Mm. I got y'all attention, checkmate. <laughs> now let me tell y'all what y'all need to hear. We fucked up as a race of people since y'all so caught up into my delivery. 5% of children now are catching HIV from ages 13 to 21. Mm. What y'all worried about? 85% of the new chlamydia, all the new cases of teenagers. What y'all so caught up about? Nigga, only 35% of most kids in inner cities can read on or above their grade level. What the fuck are y'all talking about and these kids can't read? Come on, my nigga. So if we gonna be real, let's be real. Oh, mm. uh, I'm not bashing the black woman in her BBLs. I'm not bashing the, the black woman because she wearing eyelashes. I'm not fucking with the sister because she got too many baby daddies. I'm addressing men. Boys and men, from Deion Sanders and his son to black people following a cult like man, but won't support local. How can black people give all this energy to one man and all these other black coaches from high school to college? Why is it just this one man? And we abandon hashtag HBCUs, just like we abandon no justice, no peace for George Floyd. Are we still mad about George Floyd? Are we still mad about police shooting? Is that why we not kneeling no more? Are we still boycotting the NFL? What happened to all these things? What happened? Nigga, because I'm still stuck on Tamir Rice while y'all stuck on my delivery. Mm -hmm. I'm still mad why ain't now a motherfucker tore up the country behind Tamir Rice. Mm -hmm. Baby Tamir Rice at that. Since we so in tune. See, I know a kid by the name of Dacian Steptoe who killed a high-ranking police officer by the name of Officer Garrett Hull. They called him Rambo. After he killed Officer Garrett Hull, rather than them taking Dacian Steptoe to jail, they executed him on the spot. Mm. Broke his arm in two. Ooh. So I'm saying to myself, man, why, why are these people so caught up on my delivery when all these police shoot? Nigga, ain't nobody died for nothing yet. See, nigga, I done put my life on the line to die for a family who the police was threatening. I ain't see now nigga on the front lines. So when I see celebrity niggas from football players to basketball players to rapper niggas, I say, man, them niggas can't talk to me, homie, the kind of work I done put in. Them niggas ain't got no business saying a motherfucking thing to me. Nigga, I really been feeding the community. Nigga, if you go to my city, nigga, if I talk to mayor, listen, these niggas just be talking. So now, nigga, I really get offended. That's why I say, fuck Dion. That nigga lived in Dallas, Fort Worth for over 20 years. That nigga ain't known for doing nothing in the community, my nigga. Nothing. 
Fuck his son that's been favored that get to drive a Rolls Royce, nigga, when half the kids can't even pay college tuition where we from, Ooh. let alone drive a Rolls Royce and not pay parking fee. Robbing my nigga, that's what we doing anyway to our rich cousins. If we go be real, the poor black and the rich black don't get along, so let's play like we don't. Woo! That's true. If the rich Dion come down there, he go get robbed and hit upside his head too. Mm -hmm. Them niggas will rob their mamas down there. Mm -hmm. mm. Let's just be real, homie. But I ain't left them people. I still go back to get my hair cut with them. I still pass out turkeys. I still give them Christmas toys. When they call to get their kids out of trouble, I'm still there. I ain't left them yet with my stardom. Dion left. I ain't showed up in a bunch of kids' life and promised them that we go grow together. And my first chance I got, nigga, I left them and took the money. You know what I just did? I just left this whole group of kids right here with some more abandonment issues because they were seeing me as a father figure. Y'all just see him as a coach. They were seeing a daddy, a father, just the presence of that man. Just the presence of that man in them boys' life, homie. Mm. And you take that from them? You take that from them? You take the limelight from them, you take all that from them, you strip them from that, and now they back in the dark? They back in the dark? Shh, come on, my nigga. I re I'm starting to resent black people. Uh, don't do that. Nigga, next year, I'm going to be how to fuck black people. Because they the most hypocritical, <laughs> fakest motherfucking people in the world. Because if any motherfucker mad about what I'm saying and can like Lil Durk, can, can listen to King, nigga Nipsey Hussle say, I'm going to turn all these bitches into lesbians. I started not liking that nigga when I heard him say that. Nigga, you'll turn all the hoes into lesbians. <laughs> He said, I'm gonna turn all these bitches into lesbians. Nigga, not my black queens. Maybe you ain't got no black mama. I got a black mama, nigga. But hold on. <laughs> you just told me that you wanted to doggone have an exotic baby in another foreign country. I don't so give a damn leave. what's in another country. They ain't my people. But you gonna leave them. That but, ain't you my just... pe but that ain't my people. But hold on, hold on. I you, will make a white baby and leave that white baby. That ain't my baby. <laughs> but you're saying something that you, and you admitted that you wouldn't do. No, but I would want to do it. But you don't do it. That don't mean you will do it, though. But listen, no, I won't do it. Okay, so these people it. are speaking about or having the ability to have freedom on, of speech. Come on, Cam. Come on, that Cam. They want to do come it. right. People like me for what I people dislike me for what I say. I can dislike come them on. for what they say. Come on, it's no difference. Okay, so let me ask you this though. Let me ask you this. I'm uh -huh. no fan of these entertainers. Period. Point blank. Who? Okay. Fine, and, and you can feel the way you feel. I'm not here to sit up here and try to put my hands on you to pistol whip you or spray you. Now, nah, look, come on, Cam. answer me this. Yeah, come right. Come on, Cam. With your feelings how you feel, who's doing it the right way that you can say, okay, I fuck with him. Right. Ooh. Uh, nobody. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I like that question, Cam. He said nobody, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're crazy. Uh, because I ain't watching them. I ain't paying attention to what no nigga doing. Niggas is watching me worried about what I'm saying. I'm still doing what I'm doing. Niggas is hearing me say shit and caught up into what I'm saying. Nigga, I ain't watching no nigga to know who, what they doing. Mm. I just know I'm doing it right. And I've been consistently doing it. And that's the key, consistency. Since a lot of niggas start, but they don't keep doing. I ain't stopped. I ain't every city I go to. Whether I'm doing a comedy show or anything, nigga, I make it my business to go to the community to give money directly to poor people. I make it my business. Every city. So I hear a lot of people talking, and I'm saying, well, shit, nigga, I got, I, and I ain't, I, I ain't been doing this rich. I just got rich. Nigga, I was doing this poor, hmm. with no car, in the rain, feeling shame, feeling less than. Because I understand it's obedience over sacrifice. Mm -hmm. See, it's a lot of people make sacrifices to help other people. I'm operating out of obedience. I do it even when I don't feel like it. Mm. I do it even when I think I hate something. Man, I hate these niggas, God, I still go do it. Because it's obedience at this point. But I'm a natural man. I don't like Dion. I don't like his son. I don't like them niggas. I don't like them rap niggas, homie. Because from my standpoint, I fight white people. I've been bucking the system. I've been I killed the white man, homie. I've been doing things the white. Well, so you didn't kill him. But I apart. led I led the charge. Yes, sir. Okay. And 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 the, and the newspaper described me as the smallest of the bunch, but the brains of the bunch. I put the gun in his hand. I, I'm the dictator. But it it, it still don't matter. It's a Listen, different. Listen, uh, uh, Larry, Larry Hoover didn't kill nobody, but he's in there for all them murders because he said go do it. I'm the dictator. Mm. Nigga, if I say do it, he get done. The little bitty nigga with the big mouth. 
If I say do it, it get done. I've been like that since I was a little bitty boy. I'm the general. Nigga, I ain't this brazen online and ain't this brazen. I'm a general in real life, homie. <laughs> if I got a problem, the whole city want to know what I'm mad about. But I ain't brought home to my people. I ain't sold dope in the black community. I went across the railroad track because I was trained. I was trained, not taught. I was trained by the old niggas. You go across that railroad track, nigga, and do something to them. You don't do it here. I ain't shot no gun at no nigga. I ain't had no fight with no nigga and kicked him in his face. I ain't done my people bad. All my crimes have been predicated across the railroad tracks. All of them. So I'm a different kind of nigga with a different kind of spirit. So I reign supreme over certain kind of niggas that want to talk to me that's been hurt niggas all their life. Hmm. All my crime been across the railroad track, and I take pride in that. See, most niggas don't know what it's like to stand over a white man and watch him die and look him in his face and watch him take all his last breath. Nigga, that's a picture and a vivid. I can't get out of my mind. So every time I get mad at white folks, that picture come up. Every time I get mad at white people, nigga. So can't no nigga talk to me. Dion, nigga better keep playing football, nigga. We've been snatching white folk purses, breaking into white people houses, beating up old white people because they won't let the purse go. Doing white girls bad in the name of doing them bad. Mm. Nah, homie, we've been vicious to white so, folk. So. And then I don't speak with this to try to boast and brag, but that's the side of me that rise when my people got a problem with what I say and overlook what I do because I'm watching what y'all do and listening to what y'all say and y'all just as hypocritical as y'all think I am. Mm. So you couldn't find yourself to find nothing good to say about Deion. Nothing. Oh. I've been, the man been in my city for 20 years, brother. Have you ever met him? I've met him. I've actually talked to him after he got his toe amputated. Yeah, I met him. And did you say anything? Did you say fuck Dion in front of Dion? Uh, uh, he, he, he was still at Jackson State then. Did you so say fuck him then, though? Uh, it, it wasn't no reason to say fuck him. Did you say fuck King Von in the presence of King Von people? Uh, yeah. Yeah. When I you did uh, that? Uh, it, it's on <laughs> camera. What's the boy named 600 Breezy? Uh, we stood toe to toe, 600 Breezy, in his face. Uh, you go quit, I ain't gonna quit disrespecting nothing about King Von, nigga, in his face. And went to Chicago and did an interview around the corner on DJU from O Block. You went to O Block? I went around the corner at DJU. No, 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 no. no, no I went, listen, on, we, we rolled King through Block. O Block. However, we got there, I don't know nothing about Chicago. But nigga, we <laughs> went around the corner from O Block. So, yeah, DJU yeah. is DJ, you was a DJ, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Ain't DJ you a DJ? Mm. You lying to me? Mm. And they wanted to kill that nigga for not letting him back dope me around the corner from O Block. Mm. You was probably on P Block. I don't know what block I was on. <laughs> I don't know what block we was but on. But, wasn't on but, no but, old block. I don't know what block we was on, but we wasn't too far from whatever block nah, they said you man, can't you go could on. you could be at the airport talking about we weren't too far. No, 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 no. He said you could Keep it funky, Charleston. Come on now. Let me just say this. They got the interview to prove it. So that's all I'm going to say. Wherever DJU studio is, everybody know where it's at, nigga. They got the interview mm. to prove it. But to the... They said they wanted to kill mm. DJ Clue for not backdooring that nigga. Mm. For not letting that backdoor... He in there? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, and if he's telling the truth, you got to know the presence of God was with him. Yeah, nah, facts. Come on, nah, that's facts. Chicago. <laughs> so, if you Chicago. were that siege this... You ain't say no fuck Deion Sanders why you was talking to Deion Sanders. Oh, uh, it wasn't no, when Deion was getting his toe amputated, it wasn't no reason to say fuck Deion. So why would I just. So if Deion say, Sanders were to come in here, you I'd tell Deion, nigga, fuck Deion Sanders. And what do you expect <laughs> Deion Sanders? I don't give a fuck what he gonna do. I'm ready to respond to whatever. Nigga, you think I'm talking like this and ain't ready to respond? Okay, so, so let's do it. All right, cool. Yeah, let's... you think, hold on, hold on, hold on. You think I'm running around being this disrespectful and ain't ready to respond? <laughs> so. <laughs> what if somebody were to say, man, fuck Charleston White? I hear it all the time. Or oh, sticks and stone may break my bone, but words will never hurt me. You better not put your motherfucking hands on me. And if they were to do... Oh, uh, we you in jail or hell is the only option. <laughs> he said we going to jail or hell. <laughs> you going to do that? Jail or hell. You going to take uh, uh, I, ain't never, I ain't never been beat up real bad. And nigga, I talk a lot of shit. And I've been talking this all my life. Man, you remind me of my cousin. I've been talking this all my life. And, I, and, and nigga, when I was in the institution, nigga better not touch me. And I can squabble. <laughs> and I'm dying. <dying. laughs> <laughs> hey, 
And I can squabble. Yeah. You can fight. And I can squabble. <laughs> yo, crazy, yo. Yo, crazy, yo. You say you remind me of my cousin, <laughs> Yo, this dude is crazy, yo. Oh, yo, this dude is crazy, boy. What if somebody were to say, man, fuck Charleston White? I hear it all the time. Or oh, sticks and stone may break my bone, but words will never hurt me. You better not put your motherfucking hands on me. And man. if they were to do. Oh, will you jail or hell is on <laughs> <laughs> Who go? You gonna do that? <laughs> Jail or hell? You gonna put it? You gonna take uh, it? Uh, I ain't never, I ain't never been beat up real bad, and then I talk a lot of shit, and I've been talking this all my life. Man, you remind me of my cousin. I've been talking <laughs> this shit all my life, and I and, and nigga, when I was in the institution, a nigga better not touch me, and I can squabble. You can fight. <laughs> you can fight. And I'm dangerous. But can you fight? And I'm dangerous. <laughs> you can shoot a pistol. You can uh, shoot a pistol. Uh, I'm you telling you, I spent seven years locked up, homie, and as much shit I talk. You ain't found one nigga that's been in all them Texas prisons to come out and say, nah, man, we used to beat that nigga up. But you good with words. You can, you can no, talk no, no, your no, way no, out no, of no, ass with me. They'll pay a nigga $20,000 to say you whoop me. <laughs> Just think, all this noise I've been talking for the last five years, I'm telling you, I grew up in an institution with murderers. Okay. It ain't one, and all these niggas online give an interview. Mm. It ain't one nigga. I can pull up an interview right now and the nigga say, nah, man, that nigga a monster. <laughs> A monster. <laughs> Charleston White, what's your whole name? Uh, Charleston White. What's your middle name? You, you Jamon. Jamon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, yeah, I use weapons. See, most, see, I don't fight fair. Yeah. See, most yeah. niggas is a, a prize fighter. I'm a surprise fighter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most niggas a prize fighter. I'm surprise fighting like a motherfucker. I'm a surprise. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's a yeah. good one right there. Nah, nigga, I'm a weapon user, motherfucker. <laughs> hey, that's a good one. So, he got, uh, he got yeah, canned people in the back like Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's all I do. Travel around the country with weapons, uh, saying I wish a motherfucker would, and I ain't the baddest. Yeah. Uh, I just know I ain't done nothing to nobody. And all my life, nigga, I ain't done nothing to nobody. But I, I, I just I just keep it a buck with King you. King Von killed people, homie, and y'all love him. So that's what I'm saying. Nigga, y'all worship King Von, mm -hmm. and we have documentation that he have killed women and children and people. But he's I admired. So he got what he got. I ain't never killed nobody. I ain't never robbed and shot nobody black. So why would any bad come to me for what I say? Karma don't come for what you say. Do you think, do you think this is a, this is you, this is like the persona or like you act, like this the stage, Charleston White. This ain't Jamon White. You feel uh, no, nah, no, nah, this, 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 this Charleston on, on, on the stage that, that he want the world to see. Okay, but what's uh, the, what's the daddy like? Tell me that. Uh, yeah, he the fool too. Uh, yeah, I'm the nigga, to, I'm the nigga that, that, that go to the school when I enroll the kids in school and play like he the dumb daddy who, who can't read. Uh. So I get a school a hard time. I'm the, I, nigga, I talk my son into dropping out. So I'm crazy in real life. Man, I talk my son into dropping out of school in the eighth grade. He dropped out. Because I think school is for dumb people. I think everybody with an education is dumb. So he don't got, he, he never graduated. Well, my mama talked him into going back. But I talked him into dropping out. I said, man, you can hang with me and be a dumb mechanic. I'm going to let you go up here and work at my partner mechanic shop. He just got tired of doing nothing and wanted to go back to school. And when he went back to school, I told the school, I don't give a damn if the boy can do good. But I psychologically do that so they push him through and feel sorry for him. <laughs> When he, if, yeah, nigga, I, I do the, nigga, I teach my son that ignorance prevails, so I play ignorant in real life in front of my kids. We ain't lost yet. Mm. The ignorant nigga fool ain't, lo ain't failed me yet. <laughs> During the coronavirus, I play like I couldn't read, so I ain't have to do certain things, because guess what? They don't want to read it to me. I play like the dumb nigga. They call it Jeffing. <laughs> they call it Jeffing where I'm from. Cunning. I play like the dumb nigga. I can't read and write. So I learned they give my kids a little favor. They kind of feel sorry for the dumb kids because his daddy ignorant. So they push him on through. What they got a saying that say, uh, sometimes you got to play the fool to the fool to make the fool think that they, that you the fool, but really, they the fool. That's what I've been doing. <laughs> so, so you basically saying this all, oh, this a front. Yeah. Oh, so you really don't mean like, fuck Dion. That's just. Yeah, I really, I really mean that. <laughs> 
I really mean that from the, you don't want me to mean it, but nigga, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Uh, but this, this, but but because, but but see what you, over, I, this, but this see is, what you overlooking is, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a young man that can relate to those kids who may have be be having abandonment issues because Dion. That's at Jackson up. State. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you gotta understand, nigga. I'm looking at this. Y'all looking at it from a we love Dion standpoint. I'm that guy that say I love Dion. I'm Everything the nigga. He I'm them for. kids. I'm and, I, them, and I'm not mad that he <coughs> went to go chase that bag. I'm them kids. But he did listen, his service to Jackson State. And I'm, still I'm doing not the service I, listen, to the culture see, of black but, but, people. But see, y'all. But see, this is what I'm telling black but, people. But you, 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 it, you, but you just it. named three components. You said the culture. Mm -hmm. You said Jackson State. Yes, but you never said those boys. See, that's what y'all... The players. The players, those boys. That he left. That he left. Okay. So you're speaking on their behalf. I'm looking from their perspective. If okay. you think they ain't saying fuck that nigga and his son, you come on now. The privileged son get to go with his daddy. The football coach who get to coach his son. We done seen you that at every level. the best players, too. Mm -hmm. It's called nepotism. You gonna take the people you like with you. You gonna take our best players with you because you know they got a better jersey. So it's some kids, nigga, walking around they're gonna be resentful. They're gonna have content in their heart. Mm -hmm. Y'all forgetting about the kids. But this is what I'm. But there I'm, go the butts. It's all about Dion, though. It's and not I, all about, I'm trying, all I'm trying to say, homie, I'm looking at it. Y'all looking at it from the top down. In a, I'm in a sports aspect. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you don't move on if you ain't the best. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. That's just, but like in a sports like. By him not taking the best kids, bro, like, that's in sports in general. Like, they try to get to the NFL, mm -hmm. probably. All of them. Everybody got those type of dreams. Yeah. And you're not going to move on if you're not the best talent. Yep. You feel me? I'm looking at it from the bottom up. And most people at the bottom is saying, fuck y'all at the top. And you know where I learned this from? Taking poor children to events. 601 tickets used to donate tickets to my organization. I take the kids to the WWE. We got some good seats. Boy, them kids seeing them other kids get to go down to that ring and touch the wrestler. Boy, a little nigga holler out, oh, I hate y'all. Hey, nigga, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Man, they get to be down there. If you think them kids ain't saying that about Dion and this boy, that's where the resentment is coming from. The new recruits at UCLA want to steal. We feeling left out. We feeling abandoned. We feeling rejected. Nigga, we had access at a man like a father figure. The, 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 the discipline that he brought into the locker room, the, the structure that he brought to the environment. Well, that's gone now, man. <coughs> what we go, homie? So, so, so I'm you. looking at it from their point of view. Point, point taken, but let me ask you this. If you could talk to Dion, and Dion probably will see this. Uh, there's well enough worthy clips for this. Well, yeah, his wife and the pre P law and all of them done spoke out. He 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 done looked. Yeah, he, he listened. So <laughs> if you could advise Dion to do something, what would it be? I wouldn't advise my motherfucking thing. See, that's yeah. that's hypocritical. Mm -hmm. I ain't got no advice for no nigga. <laughs> I speak with children. I got an organization called Helping Young People Excel. Hyped about hype. Youth Outreach. HYPE is an acronym for helping young people excel. I don't waste my time talking to grown folks. I try to talk down on this level right here. I say, look at that young brother. I ain't got shit to say to Dion. I got to talk to these baby. They need my words. That nigga don't need my words. He got y'all clapping for him. Them boys need our words. I, wanna, I want y'all to come talk to these boys with me. Come bring y'all light and come ask them how they feel about Dion. Cause they saying fuck him too. Why ain't nobody went back to Jackson State and talking to them people? How do y'all feel about this? What's the name of your new quarterback? Who's the new coach that took over? Mm. We don't know. Okay. Can I give don't you an give example? A fuck. Can I give you an example? Yes, sir. So probably. Let's take a young man who probably had his biggest impact or a large impact incarcerated. Juvenile detention, right? So let's say, for instance, his sentence gets shortened because of good behavior or favor from the judge or whatever the hell that you may have. That person gets awarded to a, light, a lighter sentence and is able to leave or get out. You don't want that person to get out? You want him to just stay there? Yeah. Uh, there's a guy by the name of Eric Brown. 
He's one of those kids that I talk about that had juvenile life without parole. He was sentenced to life without parole plus an additional 30-something years to die in prison when he was 16 for a crime he didn't commit. There was another guy by the name of George Toker. George was also another 16-year-old who was serving life without parole for, for murder he didn't commit. And he had been in there 30-something years. George is the guy you just <coughs> described. George took the out. But by George taking the out, it keeps all those other 2,000 guys life without parole in. Eric Brown didn't take the out. Eric Brown is being a sacrificial lamb. He's out on the appeal. But he did almost 30 some years too, homie. But nigga, it's a chance that he can be found guilty and put back in there on his crime. But nigga, he making a sacrifice for the others that's coming behind him. So I would ask that that one person, homie, make the sacrifice for the others that's coming behind you. Somebody got to do it. Somebody in the family, homie, got to make the sacrifice. Got to be that lamb and say, man, I'm going to do it different. I'm making a sacrifice to make this. Somebody got to do it. Mm -hmm. Dion could have been that one. You wanted Dion to sacrifice? Uh, for us? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I did, homie. Uh, uh -huh. I, I was selected to campaign with Donald Trump uh, to go to three key battleground states. Uh, I did trainings for the United States Department of Homeland Security, Human Trafficking Division, North Texas Crime Commission, Eastfield Police Training Academy. Uh, I trained the state's juvenile correction officer. Yeah, I sacrificed a lot for my people. Only to realize, nigga, I don't like my people. <laughs> I'm trying to connect with my kind. See, there's a whole, there's a whole species of birds. Those are my people. But my kind is you got red birds and blue birds, and red birds and blue birds don't fly together. I'm looking for my kind amongst my people. Mm. So I don't give a fuck about my people. I'm looking for my kind. How do you identify your kind? By their actions. Uh -huh. And ain't no way my kind would have went to that 92% white school and changed them around to make billions in less than one year, and we don't get nothing. I'm the only one to benefit. Everybody around me eating. Everybody around me got a YouTube channel. Everybody around me is benefiting off me being here. It ain't just me. And I can leave everybody and be the only one benefiting. And they got sacrifice. At this point, it's complete obedience. Because at some point, obedience got to kick in. I'm doing it because I'm called to do it. So you talk this Jesus talk. You talk, homie, uh, uh, if you're leaving for the money, then what's the, what about the purpose? Because even though I'm getting money, uh, I've never abandoned my purpose of working with children, working with youth. That's why my conversation is, fuck them, nigga. That's what the key is saying. But in the Bible, you, you quoted it. It was in Samuel. It said, obedience is better, better than sacrifice. sacrifice. So if he's being obedient to the word rather than sacrificing himself, he can impact more by using their platform. I don't see how. You don't think that? Mm -mm. Nah, it's uh, well, it's because it's way. about money. It's not about people and purpose. It's about his son. He already said that the, he, would, he would coach at the Atlanta Falcons if the Falcons grit his son. So it's about his son, and I get that. Let's not make it about this is about these black kids. Now it's about his boy. The mother just fall under the umbrella, if we go be honest. Mm. And that's okay. But I'm telling black people, what happened to the cause? How did we abandon the call for one person's success? Look, Cam want me to tell y'all what I really feel. Now I know I'm gonna bring my real motherfucking feelings to the internet. So here we go. All right? I'm a, most people relate to they upbringing, their environment, their background, how you was raised and where you was raised, kind of, it, it's a big part of, of who you are and how you engage the world. So naturally, I'm going to sympathize with, with the players who may feel abandoned by their father figure coach, right? So I share that abandonment that these kids may feel uh, because I don't put myself, I don't play football, right? So I can't put myself in the shoes of a football player. I can put myself in the shoes of a man who would choose to take a better job to take care of his family or to take a job to advance his son's career. 
On the flip side of that, you got a bunch of kids that feel abandoned. Uh, I got a couple of them in my phone. Uh, you, got a, you got a few coaches uh, that feel neglected. Uh, you got some staff members uh, that felt wronged. Uh, I, I look from, 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 from their position. Uh, the abandonment issues, uh, the kids who had hopes, who had just transferred to their school, who probably wasn't as good as the ones who could start on the football team, what was there because of his leadership and his guidance. And you abruptly take that from them. Nobody's talking about that. Uh, not, only, not only do you abruptly take that from them, they are now pushed back into non-existence. They don't exist no more. Mm -hmm. They back in darkness. Mm -hmm. uh, when you do the 60 minute special, and I hate to repeat this, but I'm gonna repeat it. Uh, there were many people in, in Jacksonville who was offended by, by the special because they only show one element, uh, the poor bad side of Jacksonville and there's a vibrant side of it. So to take, I'm not really mad at Dion, homie. Uh, I'm saying. So you can, so you can, you can see where he coming from. Like. Uh, no, I can't. Because I'm telling <laughs> you, homie, I wouldn't okay. have done it. Okay, that's cool. But because, because can, you, I'm can already, you see where he at though? From no, the top. I don't. I, well, he's not on top because <sighs> because because now because now he's in question. They're already saying that he's not. So so you're already looking at the critics. He's on top in black people eyes, but he's ain't on. He's he's not on in top in the alumni's eyes. He's not on on top in the eyes of the sports critics. He just had to fire his, his offensive coordinator. <coughs> so he's not on top in our eyes. He don't have a 50-50 winning season. Black people are the only ones saying, well, they won one game last year. They wasn't even expected to. Man, everybody's expected to win, even when you come from losing. But hold on. That's, let, let, what, let, you, that's let, what you speed and not. Now, now you're talking my language uh, uh, because now you're talking about he's already superseded expectations in Colorado. Well, it two two more games, right? That's fine. It so, don't matter so, if it was so, a half a game. So you can't me, minimize So let me just say, so let me so let's fuck the games, homie. Look how much money this white school done benefit from all this black support. They couldn't get this from their white support. Uh. They couldn't get this from them. We came and made them people from buying tickets from 400 and... He switched it up, too. He switched it up on Cam. He was talking about when he, when he felt like Cam was about to get, get in his tail about sports, he switched it up about the actual thing about people and right. stuff like that. Right, right, right. $62 for the whole season to nigga just one seat costing this. The only way we get free is economics, uh, not by jobs. So imagine what we could have done had we kept this in the Negro League. What happened to the Negro League, brothers? Hmm. Our best and our brightest is going to keep going over there. Every time we build something good, they go going to keep buying it out, BET. Every time we build something good, they go going to keep destroying it, Black Wall Street. They're going to keep taking it from us. I'm going to give you an example. And we, we good, right? Uh, I heard this from a uh, black-owned apparel company by the name of Actively Black, Lenny yeah. Smith, mm. right? Uh, they got some slick clothes, too. You seen them? What they got? Actively Black. Actively Black. Mm, it's all right. I mean, I... I don't wear clothes like that. Right, yeah, come on, yo. No, they got JFK, like, my favorite president, bro. Not Obama. <laughs> so... What? I'm gonna show you. When actively you get black. I mean, I'm actively black all day. I don't need to wear a shirt to say actively oh, black. I'm talking about the actual uh, clothes. The actual clothes is slick. Oh, the clothes is slick. Okay. Yeah. All right. With him and his his uh, lady, and he shared this story about one of his mentors who is an, who was an investor uh, in actively black. He said. Well, I asked him, I said, yo, would you ever sell Actively Black to like a, a juggernaut apparel company? Nike, Puma, Adidas, XYZ. He said, you know what? I never will. But I'm going to tell you a story that I asked a person who sold his company to a Caucasian person and got a lump sum, a billion dollars, right? And he asked him, he said, yo, 
why did you do that? The man responded and said, I did that because that capital that I got with that money, I was able to impact my community with that, mm. to give more entrepreneurs that look like me mm -hmm. opportunity <clears throat> with the money that the white man gave me. Mm. So when you're, when you're trying to raise capital, it's not necessarily, you don't have to sell your company. You can go to a person who looks like you that has the same green dollars, blue dollars, yen, currency, and you can still consider yourself a minority or a black company. So when you see a person like Deion Sanders doing these certain type of things, you want him to sacrifice? Okay, cool. But he's opening opportunities for black people to be able to have opportunity in ways that we never have had. Now, to your point, now, this is trickling over into what I know for a fact, right? With Deion Sanders being who and, and, and being as impactful as he is, right? Now, the white man is saying, hey, we need that type of impact. Mm. I seen a, I seen a uh, advertisement commercial with uh, Colorado watching their games. And you know how they do, you know, like the in the science labs on campus and all this and all that. And the tagline was, that's prime. That's prime. Oh, boom. The, 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 the student said, that's prime. Boom. That's, you may have seen it, too. And yeah. I was saying to that as a way to say, OK, now these universities are saying to them, to themselves, like, yo, maybe we do need to uh, hire more African-Americans because, hold on, stay with me. Uh, when you look in the NFL, uh, there's not a lot of minority head coaches, OK? Up under a head coach, you got coordinators. There's not a lot of minority defensive or offensive coordinators. Mm. Or let's look higher than a head coach. Mm. There's not a lot of minority GMs. Mm. Mm. Or let's look higher than a GM. There's not a lot of minority owners. Mm -hmm. mm. But what Dion has been able to do with saying, hey, his impact has been good for business. Right. So therefore, for everything. With his impact being good for business, potentially there could be another minority that could come behind him and make an even greater impact because of the likes of Deion Sanders. White people know black coaches won't lead them to being no great uh, winning teams. White people know that. Uh, you ain't gonna get no Bill Belichick check out of Deion. You ain't gonna get no motherfucker me, Pat Riley, out no, out, yeah, you ain't gonna get it. This is what I know. So you can't get, so, so. No, nah, black so, coaches, no, nah, black coaches so can't coach. So what no. if. They don't know sports, bro. <clears throat> they don't know sports. Mm. If I were to tell you Tony Dungy, he ain't uh, no good coach. No, nah, he wasn't no good coach. Oh, cap, boy, you, <laughs> now you talk, talking out the side of your neck. Uh, <laughs> how many championships he won? He won a championship. How many? It don't matter. He How won. many? He won one. Bill Belichick won many. <laughs> you, you, like got you, compare, you got well, you got you got well, you got you got you got you got a Phil Jackson and 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 you got a what's the little short nigga play for play for the San Antonio Spurs? Oh, uh, uh, Avery Avery Johnson. <laughs> so you got an Avery Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Holly, you got a Phil Jackson, you got Avery Johnson. Yo, crazy, yo. And you got a Phil Jackson. Avery won one. Give me Phil that won many. Yeah, but he had tenure, though. Well, let me just Over say Over time. Let, let me just <laughs> say this. Because oh, I just made white, my... white, White people, long as we've been in this country, white people are not looking at one black person and saying, maybe we should hire more black person because this one black person done good. And let's just be real. America's not doing that. America's not doing that. Long as we've been here proving ourselves as coaches, as athletes, there's not one black person that can go get a job and convince white people that we need to hire more black people. It's always a token nigga. He's a token nigga. Uh -huh. He's a token nigga that played football for white folks. We've always been patted on the ass and tapped on the head, boy. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't give him a chance. He wanted to coach at Florida. State. Black folks gave him a chance mm. to prove that he can do it. Why leave us to go over here with these white folks? You already knew we were having money problem, big dog. 
That ain't no. So say so that. so don't so, say that. so don't, don't you say it, that. it was part. It was, don't so 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 why so why why did he have why didn't he get the rest of his money for his contract then? But you can't say that though. Well, let me okay. That. Well, let me say this then. Let me say this. Why did black people follow him? Why didn't black people stay with Jackson State? That's Be all I want to know. Because obviously he left. Okay then. So we left HBCUs to go join the white universities. We took our support, and not only did we take our support, we took our dollars. We did the same thing when they said, hey, y'all, we're going to take the signs down. Let them niggas come over here and eat so we can shut them, shut them places down. It's the same trick. Integration. Hey, come on, Dion, come integrate with us. Mm. We strip you of your powers. So what star power do you have for HBCUs now that can what? at least, hold on, let me see, that can, homie, did you saw the first couple games? the star power that was on those sidelines. So now, since you think that he can do more because he can recruit more black students, well, how many black students can he get on that football team at that 92% white school? How? What, how much change can he do with how many 12 players he may get 20? He can't make an all-black team. Bullshit. We see it all the time. Okay, when he do that, then alumni are gonna be pretty upset because they got some white kids in Colorado that want to play on the team. They already having some problems because he fired some white kid. They already secretly writing about it. Why you okay. think his son mm. car okay. is now being written up and booted? Okay, let me ask you this. Colorado's still racist, y'all. I just want y'all to know that let they me, have a real history of racism. Let me ask you this. So I wouldn't say my black son. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Just say something. <laughs> How many white people are on Bill Belichick's defense? Not many, I don't think. How many white people are on Nick Saban's defense? Uh, not many. So you're not sitting up here telling me something that I don't already know. Yeah. Well, I, I, I agree with you, but you have so to it's look. Not, it's, not, it's not the but players. The white folks will sit back and let Nick Saban go get a bunch of niggas to run. They ain't finna let no black man go get a bunch of black people to come take over a team in a predominantly white school. They're not finna do that, fam. If you, you think they go let, it's, they already mad he came in and fired the player that was before them. <clears throat> and there's some upset alumni about that. And guess what? He's losing, and he's losing his star power. You don't see any of those rappers on the sideline anymore. That's what the white folks are saying. Mm -hmm. Dang, we went past the time, shorty. Yeah. Mm. Woo, this a good interview, yeah, yo. Yeah. This a great interview, yo. Yeah, Mookie. Yeah. Bro, what you think, yo? I know it's a lot to unpack. I mean, it, it, it's a lot of curveballs in this interview, but but at the same time, it's a lot of stuff that he throwing straight down the middle. Right. So like I said before, you got to take Charleston White with a grain of salt because he do speak facts. Right. Yes, he does. He does speak facts. But he also speaks that bull. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, boy. So you got to be careful when you listen to him. You feel what I'm saying? Like I said, I look at him like a Umar Johnson, a Candace Owen, or, you know, the new dude, Brandon Tatum. Well, no. Brandon Tatum ain't that new, but I, that's, how, that's how I view him. You got to take the sweet with the sour. And you got to know when to shut it off and when I cut it on. Mm. So yeah. Look, y'all, if y'all stay with us, if y'all stay with us for this long, mm. thank y'all. We really love y'all. We appreciate y'all, mm. man. We got one more part of this. Y'all really, really enjoyed the first part. Mm. We know y'all gonna enjoy this part. We was it was just more engaging in this part, right? right you right. feel me? So me and Mook would be very interested to see how that last part gonna go. Cam and Charleston White. Overall, bro, so far, y'all did all. Y'all doing a wonderful job, bro. We love the topics. We love the back and forth. Mm -hmm. We love the comedian part. You feel me? And yeah, amazing interview, man. Um, anything else you got to say before we get out of here, Mookie? Appreciate y'all for stopping by. Nah, facts. I'm Nick Dunson. No, I'm Mookie Dunson. And we out, baby. One.